first Moody's and now Fitch. The latest ratings agency to warn, watch out. We botched this debt ceiling, say goodbye to America's top-notch credit rating. Kansas Republican Senator Jerry Moran says he's not surprised, but he is here. Senator, I guess they're circling the proverbial debt wagons, huh? Uh, Neil, I guess that's where we are. It, uh, it's clear to me. In fact, I'm one of those who's made my position awfully clear and in, informed President Obama weeks ago that uh, based upon what I'd seen to date, no leadership on his part in uh, presenting a, a budget that is any place close to balanced or even moving us in the direction of a balanced budget, uh, not adopting any of the recommendations by his own uh, debt reduction commission, uh, that in the lack of that leadership being uh, provided by the president, I just don't see any way that I would vote to raise the debt ceiling because it's going to take some presidential leadership to get us where we need to be in regard to reduce spending today, next year, the next year, structural changes that keep us from getting right. back in the position but that we're in. But do a majority of your colleagues, Senator, feel the same way? Well, they certainly say that now, and I, I believe that's where they are. What I'm really worried is these ongoing meetings with the vice president, and, and clearly it's, it's fine, it's a good thing, we need to sit down and have a conversation, but I'm worried that we're being played here, meaning that the politics of this is that the, 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 the vice president and the group just keeps talking, uh, and we get up to what is August, and then there's this crisis mentality in which we're all told we have to vote to raise the debt ceiling or else the, you know, the earth, the world is going to come to an end. So bottom line, uh, we should explain to you, because you're in, involved in this and you know all the nuances, Senator. A lot of our viewers, myself included, by the way, are not remotely as schooled on this process. Uh, but, but you're saying that if there are not provisos with a debt ceiling hike, in other words, an equal number of dollar cuts to whatever hike in the debt ceiling, 2.4 trillion or whatever, then it's a no-go with you. And if en enough of your colleagues feel the same way, we are going to default, right? Uh, we would have a, I guess you'd call a technical default, uh, although again, there's no reason for the, for the debt service not to be covered. And on, on another worry, I wouldn't be surprised but what there are those within the administration who want to play politics and make the worst possible decisions for uh, what not to pay. Uh, so that, that the they, political wait, wait, pressure wait, wait, wait. grows. So you're saying that they would deliberately default, deliberately not make good on a Treasury yeah, note or bond payment? Because that would be uh, a default. Not necessarily deliberately on a, on a Treasury note uh, or a bond, but uh, say that we don't have the money to pay Social Security recipients or just to create greater political pressure any one on of those members of Congress. I understand, sir, but as you know, any one of those actions were they to be taken would, would trigger a credit downgrade well we're almost ready to credit credit uh, have a credit downgrade now uh, there are those who say that it's irresponsible not to vote to raise the debt ceiling uh, i would counter to say that it's irresponsible to kick the can down the road and to um, raise the debt ceiling and not address the structural issues that we face uh, we'd rather have a technical default than a than a substantive real default because we can't afford to pay uh, our debt service, and we can't afford to let the world decide that we're no longer credit worthy uh, and raise interest rates. Uh, we can't sell our treasury notes and bonds at, at the current interest rates. So you're interest arguing, rates rise. I understand, Senator, but you're saying that sooner or later we continue this process, e even if we were to temporarily get over this debt ceiling hurdle and raise it, that invariably we'll be back in the same stew and the, and the rating risks being downgraded regardless, right? Absolutely. That's exactly what I'm saying. And my point is don't miss the leverage that this debt ceiling issue has in enforcing members of Congress who don't and, and an administration who some at least don't want to take the, the stands necessary to reduce spending, uh, to change us uh, structurally in the future, our spending patterns. And I also would say that while all of our conversations so far has been about uh, reduce spending and paying down the debt. The other aspect of this that gets a lot less attention is let's grow the economy. Right. The last time we came close to have a balanced budget was at the end of President Clinton's days. In part, there was some spending restraint. In right, part, right, Republicans right. and Democrats couldn't get along. But mostly it was a growing economy that increased the overall revenues. It will the do it. Growing, get, you're right. Senator, I wish we had more time, sir. We do not, but thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity, Neil. In the meantime, did I tell you it is hot outside? This plate of glass.